Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. We are back at the 1857 First American Chess Congress with the Candidates Tournament of 2020 uh, being put on hold until further notice. We are continuing with our Morphe Saga and uh, well, w whatever else happens in the chess world, like I said. So here uh, we we uh, stopped at game two uh, between uh, Louis Paulson and Paul Charles Morphy. Morphy won game one uh, fairly easily and uh, it's, uh, it's quite the game. So I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Uh, without further ado, let's check it out. And if you are just joining us in the saga, uh, as Paul Morphy is a pretty big deal in the chess world, uh, I will put a link in the description below. It will be in the description below in every Morphy video, uh, so you can start the saga from the beginning if you want to catch up, uh, which I do recommend you do. Uh, but uh, getting back to this game, Paulson now, after losing game one, uh, opens with e4. And it's important uh, to mention that um, uh, after game one finished, uh, game two started the same day. They started this game at 7.30 p.m., uh, and uh, th then they play again uh, till midnight, and then uh, at midnight we have an adjournment uh, uh, until tomorrow. Uh, but okay, e4, Morphy replies with e5, knight f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. So the Ruy Lopez is on the board. Uh, we have knight to f6, Morphy goes for uh, the, the Berlin defense, uh, and now uh, castles uh, by, uh, by Paulson. We have knight captures on e4 by... Uh, by Morphy, the Rio Gambit, we have d4 and now uh, a6, uh, a somewhat rarer move uh, in, uh, uh, nowadays, but uh, it, it is still played. Uh, and bishop back to d3 now. Today, uh, bishop to a4, or bishop captures on c6 are, are almost exclusively played, but in those days, bishop back to d3 by Paulson, and now d5, strengthening his knight on e4. We have knight captures on e4, on e5 by Paulson, and now knight captures on d4. Uh, and uh, it is as of this move that this position has never been reached again. Uh, so, uh, continuing the game, uh, we have rook to e1, now putting pressure on the knight here, and here Morphy just plays bishop to e6. Now, do you see uh, Morphy's sneaky idea why the bishop should not capture knight, why, why you can't win a pawn here? It's actually, it's actually very tricky, because after bishop captures, pawn captures, and rook captures, uh, now do you see Morphy's idea? Uh, even pause the video if you don't. So for those of you who were able to do that, congratulations on uh, spotting the nastiest, the nastiest of discoveries. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's knight to b3 with an attack on the rook and also the queen. Now the point is, if you just trade queens, then uh, you have the threat of checkmate and also just uh, of uh, losing the, the rook on a1. So rook to, rook to d1, rook e1 blocks, rook captures here will be made. So here there's nothing to do uh, once you prevent checkmate, just uh, knight captures here. That's not a knight. Knight captures rook uh, and it's game over. So what you would have to do after rook captures on e4 and this knight to b3 idea is actually queen to h5. Now saying if you capture the rook, I have knight captures on f7 and you will not be able to capture because of uh, all, all the pins here. So here we would have g6, knight captures on g6, h captures on g6, and the rook captures on e6. Of course, with, with uh, uh, optimal play, captures, captures with check, king d7, and now you grab the knight, uh, as there is no more threat of checkmate, since the king is blocking the queen. And now we have this position where uh, Morphy is uh, Morphy's up the exchange, but his king is uh, somewhat loose, and he's also down two pawns. So it would be would be a trade off. But if Morphy can get the king to safety here, maybe get this rook into the game, uh, should be should be uh, all right. But of course, that's easier said than, said than done. This is basically Morphy's idea behind giving the pawn here. So. Paulson uh, declines it, he, he goes c3, knight back to c6, we have captures, captures, and now just queen to a4, putting pressure on the pawn here, uh, we have queen to d7, and only now Paulson grabs the pawn, while the queen guards the d1 square, captures, captures, and the rook, uh, sorry, not rook captures, but instead queen captures, even better, the rook now guards the d1 square, uh, and uh, we have this uh, position where it's uh, again a trade-off. Morphy's pawn structure here on the queen side is somewhat ruined. However, he does have the bishop pair, uh, which Morphy, Morphy really likes his bishop pair. So bishop to d6, continuing development, and knight to d2. Uh, we have castles by Morphy and now knight to f3. And here bishop to d5. And here Morphy is extremely happy, both of his bishops eyeing the, the white king. Uh, we have queen back to d3 and now rook a to e8. Uh, hoping, hope, hoping for captures, captures so the other rook can, uh, can come to e8. 
Bishop to g5 by Paulson. Uh, again, he wants to connect rooks. Uh, and now queen to g4 by Morphy. With h3, pushing the queen back here, uh, the, there's the simple thread of just captures an f3, and then you remove the defender of the bishop, so you just pick it up. So here, h3, kicking the queen away, queen to h5, and now uh, bishop back to d2 to parry all the threats. Uh, and now rook to e6. Morphy goes for a nice rook lift with the idea of either doubling here or even just shifting the rook into the attack. Problem is, uh, if you capture and captures, then uh, Morphy gets the semi-open f-file for his rook, and this pawn will start marching forward. So it will be it will be a good position for Black. Here, however, uh, Paulson could have uh, seized the seized the initiative, so to say, uh, with c4. It's it's a nice move now that the rook blocks the e6 square, and here we would see a trade. Uh, as it's uh, unavoidable, captures, 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 and G captures, and we get to this uh, position with equal material on the board, position, uh, pawn structure pretty much identical, uh, with uh, uh, Morphy having a uh, ruined uh, pawn structure on the queen side, and uh, Paulson having a ruined pawn structure on the king side here, as you can see. Uh, but it would be uh, equalish game. Uh, so after rook to e6, uh, Paulson, instead of the c4 move, he went for knight to g5. He wants to kick away the rook, but this kind of only helps Morphy get his rook into the game, because Morphy actually wanted to switch it over to g6. Uh, and now, uh, knight to e4 back. Uh, here, again, uh, you could you could also force matters with c4, uh, and basically just uh, offer a pawn here after a bishop captures, king captures, and h6. But then you play c5, and you get uh, you you get a lot of counterplay. For example, the bishop cannot go back. You have to capture then rook a c1, and you have a lot of weaknesses here for the white rook to gobble up. And of course, you you have to give up uh, at least uh, at least a knight here. But you already want a piece, so it's not a problem. So that's uh, one way to go about it. Again, this c4 move uh, basically presents itself. Uh, but Paulson goes back, knight to e4, uh, blocking, of course, rook, uh, rook captures on g2. Uh, or does it? Uh, Morphy uh, goes exactly for this, rook captures on g2. He wants to exploit this pin and uh, win, the, win back the material with f5. So king captures on g2 and now f5. Uh, and here, uh, of course, uh, well, you, you will grab back your, your material, but Morphy does have the bishop pair, and he doesn't mind giving up the exchange. This rook on a1 isn't really doing all that much. So here, Paulson uh, played f3 to strengthen the position a little bit. And now, feel free to pause the video. What would you play here in this position? Uh, well, I'll give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, there is only one good move here for Morphy, and that is F captures on E4. It's uh, it's an odd move to play, especially uh, uh, when someone asks you to solve a position just to capture a piece. But in, in this position, it's actually the way to go. So F captures on E4 wins the game uh, however black white decides to play it. For example, F captures on E4. Uh, now you go queen to G6 with check. And after the king moves, it doesn't really matter what you play, rook F2, and you are very quickly getting checkmated, not, not much you can do about this. Uh, on the other hand, uh, or and of course if rook g1 just blocks then rook to h2 is mate, there's also that in the position. So would, what you would have to do after f captures on e4 is maybe give back some material with rook captures on g4 but still queen g6 check. And now rook g4 is impossible because you pick up the queen on d3. So again after king to h1, queen g3 threatening mate uh, and now after the mate is prevented, let's say queen here, now you go for rook captures on f3. Uh, so what here? Queen g2, and now comes the the trick the trickery. Rook f1 check. Uh, of course, if you capture with the queen, then queen to h2 is mate, so you'd have to capture with the rook. But now bishop captures on e4, and there's nothing to be done here. Queen has to capture, and rook to a uh, queen to h2 is mate. So uh, with this f captures on e4, uh, Morphy wins the game. However, Morphy switched the move order. Morphy instead of capturing and then queen g6, first played queen to g6 check. Uh, and this allows Paulson uh, the incredible save with knight to g5. And it's not a problem, Morphy wins back the piece, but now it's not as, as potent of a position as it was. So here h6 was played by Morphy, but now c4. And now what do you do here? Uh, bishop back to f7, uh, and now comes h4. Uh, just strengthening the position, and the rook to d8 by Morphy, not in a rush to, to win back the piece, as it is inevitable. So queen to c2, getting out of the nasty discoveries, and now comes h captures on g5. We have h captures on g5, and bishop to e6 now. Uh, we have rook to h1 by Paulson, 
uh, with the idea of probably doing something along the h file, maybe maybe double rooks or, or, or something like that uh, without that queen move. Uh, but it, there there were better ways to go about the position. But okay, bishop to e7 by Morphy immediately goes after the g5 pawn. He wants to bust open the position uh, in front of the white king. But now f4, strengthening g5. And now c5, Morphy needs to get hold of the white king. He wants to play bishop to c8 to b7 and grab hold of this diagonal this way. So rook a to e1, uh, now saying that if you just move the bishop, then I can pick up your bishop on e7. So king f7 defending, and now rook to h3, with ideas of doubling up on the h file, but also uh, with the option of just going rook e3 or rook d3, depending on what Morphy plays. Morphy continues with bishop to c8, and now it's very useful that the rook moved, so you don't have to worry about uh, any, any uh, material winnings here. King to g1, getting out of the light squares, and bishop to b7. And okay, now Morphy's uh, bishop is extremely strong here. Uh, bishop back to c1, now the queen can also enter the game, uh, and rook to d4. Uh, just uh, trying something uh, here you might you might be able to squeeze in queen to c6 but still it's hard to do anything along the di the dark the light squares as the queen and rook are covering both g2 and h1 but it's useful to have it as a resource uh, we have b3 just strengthening the pawn here and now bishop to d6 again morphe goes after the pawn now queen e2 saying okay if you go after the, the pawn here then queen to e8 check uh, will, will be all that i need as it, it will be checkmate so rook to e4 blocking queen to f2 and now queen to e6 if you repeat the rook to d4 then queen can come to h2 and then you can just start kicking away bishop to e3 will kick away the rook and uh, it's hard to say where where the rook will go from there you have ideas like rook to h8 maybe this rook can come here and uh, it could be could be very unpleasant so after queen to f2 we have queen to e6 by morphy threatening now to capture the rook and now paulson goes rook h to e3 Morphy again uh, reluctant to do any trades goes queen to d7 now maybe he can get queen to c6 in and deliver some queen to h1 checkmate but queen to h4 now going for queen to h5 check uh, Morphy blocks it king to g6 and now queen back to h3. Uh, all of the time keeping an eye on these two squares. Uh, we have bishop back to e7, and uh, now the queen also has access uh, throughout the d-file, and rook captures on e4 finally. We have bishop captures on e4, and now comes queen to e3. Point is, you don't have uh, rook here with check picking up the queen, uh, because after the rook, the rook captures, you do, of course do not capture right away. First you go queen to d1 check. And now after king f2, now you capture and now, uh, it, well, it's a bit of a different story. Uh, white is still better, but it's uh, much less than you've had. So after this uh, uh, bishop to e4 uh, capture, we have queen back to e3 and now queen to d8. Uh, again, Morphy trying to trying to wiggle his way uh, somehow into the position, but it is still very hard. You first have to get rid of this bishop away from the e-file, so maybe at some point you can move this bishop and then somehow, I don't know, gra grab hold of this diagonal. That's pretty much the only thing Morphy has going for him. Also, queen to h8 followed by queen to h1 is a possibility. So, queen to h3, stopping that, and now queen to d4 with check. We have bishop to e3 and now queen to c3. So, Morphy was able to uh, wiggle his way in with the queen. Uh, we have queen back to f1. Uh, and now uh, queen to a5, saying that okay, I have to try something. I'm I'm pretty uh, I'm looking pretty bad here. We we have to try everything we have. Uh, we have queen to f2 defending the a2 pawn, and now queen to b6 again. Now with the idea that maybe the bishop can go back and the queen can go in front of the bishop, but rook e2 now defends the pawn uh, and queen to c6 now. Uh, saying that we, we don't have time to, uh, for any for any uh, switching for example if bishop to a8 uh, well, well you don't really have all that much to worry about you can just go bishop to, to d2 or queen to h2 and you will again be covering all the squares so it's still not the moment so for the moment queen to c6 by morphe and now bishop back to c1 again the rook is very strong on the e file and queen to d7 now uh, we have rook to d2, pushing the queen back, uh, and now queen to e6. Again, maybe with ideas of now bringing the bishop back, uh, but queen to e3, not allowing it by Paulson. So Paulson is better, but he doesn't really know how to how to work the position. We have queen back to c6 by Morphy and the bishop to b2 now. Okay, finally now his bishop also assumes the this beautiful diagonal. 
king to f7 uh, and now that the, the king defends the bishop uh, this bishop can now again move queen back to h3 uh, now again going for this uh, checking idea but queen to g6 preventing it we have rook to h2 now uh, with hopes of uh, trading queens and going into an endgame but now queen to d6 by morphe and it was in fact in this position on move 53 that the players agreed to a draw uh, and as the title suggests uh, the game lasted for 15 hours so after game one they started playing at 7 30 p.m they uh, adjourned the game at midnight then they continued the other day uh, and then uh, the other day after after dinner they again continued playing at 7 30 until midnight and then uh the day after tomorrow they concluded the game but all in all 15 hours of, of play and really just uh really just crazy uh so here uh paulson is reluctant to go into queen to h5 just to show why why the game is a draw it's not a draw but why the, why paulson thought it was a draw uh for example g6 queen to h7 check king to e8 and now okay queen to h8 check you're gonna go king to d7 and now you do have to worry about queen to d1 check so first queen back to c3 and now uh this doesn't really do anything as the king is very safe on f2 so you'd have to capture on f4 and then uh, allow this trade but after captures captures and captures uh king to e6 it would be uh, would be a, a draw draw drawn end game as morphe is up uh, morphe is up as you can see uh, two pawns uh well one pawn for the moment but he will capture this pawn uh fairly quickly even if something like this let's say you can go for this and uh, it, all in all it, it will be a draw yes you have a rook against the bishop but two connected pass pawns are incredibly strong and chances are against morphe you might even lose this uh how you should in fact treat the position after queen to d6 where the draw was agreed upon uh is not queen to h h5 uh, but uh, queen back to e3 you have to admit that uh, your uh, rook h2 queen h3 idea uh, on the h file wasn't all that impressive uh, and now after queen to d1 check play the brave king to f2 and claim that okay now you're better uh, because now whatever you play it doesn't really matter let's say king g8 now queen to e2 you offer a queen trade and after the queen moves now you go bishop to e5 let's say you kick the queen even further uh, uh, queen g6 and now queen e3 and now you can consider a move like queen to h3 going for h8 and so on while your pieces are on optimal squares so this is definitely uh, how you would uh, seek advantage in, in this position. But Paulson couldn't work it out, and uh, in the end, they decided uh, to, to, to draw this game. He was, uh, he was afraid of uh, queen to d1 a, a bit too much, and he couldn't find a way uh, to, to enter the position. Uh, and also, uh, I, would, uh, I would just like to include to this game uh, a letter from Daniel Willard Fisk to, to Professor George Allen uh, about uh, this game and uh, this matchup in general between Paulson and Morphy. Uh, here, Willard Fisk says, uh, nothing can be more pleasing. It's from the book by David, David Lawson that I'm using to prepare for the uh, Morphe saga. He says, nothing can be more pleasing or graceful than the elegance of Morphe's play, his manner of touching the pieces and moving them and so forth. Uh, I have never seen him Im impatient but once uh, in his second game with Paulson, after the German had taken repeatedly 30, 45 and 50 minutes and in some instances over one hour for only one move, uh, Morphe became so thoroughly worn out that in his haste he made uh what should have been his second move uh first and was only able to draw a one game a splendid piece of chess that it had been up to that moment he was so depressed that he was so depressed uh, at the failure to score so fine a game that he uh, and I will not finish the sentence because I will spoil too much. But basically, uh, Willard Fisk is talking about this moment where uh, after f3, Morphy didn't capture the piece and just won the game with queen g6. But he reversed the move order. Uh, as he says, due to Paulson's long thinking for uh, over for an hour for one move, 50 minutes for one move, uh, like, uh, you know, like, uh, like Grishuk time. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely took, took its toll on Morphe and Morphe uh, switched the move order, which is something that uh, really doesn't doesn't happen to, to, to good old Paul Morphe, uh, but here it did. And, uh, you know, it, it's no wonder they, that they had to invent chess clocks uh, when, when uh, <laughs> such things happened. Uh, but yeah, uh, Paulson grabs a draw against Morphe and the match continues. And so will our sentence that we have so uh, uh, rudely abrupted. But yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Lars Roger Billings, uh, Lucian uh, Cordiano, 
Cordunianu, uh, uh, David Kaiser, Ante Kraljevic, and Isaac Garzon for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the Paul Morphy saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world, which at this moment isn't all that much, but you, you never know. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.